I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. So today's video is basically comparing natural deodorants versus antiperspirants. And not just natural deodorants, but just deodorants in general. What's the difference? Which one's better for the skin of colour? Which are my preferred products? As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. Every recommendation I give is evidence-based and I go through ingredients list to teach you actually so when you go shopping what to look for on the inky list. If that sounds like a good idea to you give me a thumbs up let's dive right in. So first things first what is the difference between deodorants and antiperspirants? Deodorants basically just mask the smell with perfume. Antiperspirants block the sweat glands with aluminium, so you don't sweat at all. So using a deodorant means that you will still sweat. It's just that the smell has been masked. Whereas antiperspirants, if you're wearing, for example, a white shirt and you don't want anyone to see any sweat stains, an antiperspirant is the best way to go because it stops sweating. The next question I get asked is, Dr. V, does sweat itself smell? And the answer is no, sweat doesn't actually smell. So where does the odor come from? Bacteria that naturally resides on our skin will break down acids and protein in the sweat and that's what gives that odor. So natural deodorants will basically rely on essential oils and fragrance in order to mask the smell and it can be effective. The problem is that Fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis. Contact dermatitis is basically inflammation that takes place on the skin. It can happen a few days later, it can happen months later, it can happen years later of using a product over years. Suddenly years later, you start getting inflammation of the skin and you think, I haven't actually changed any products. What happened? And it's probably that one of your products has got fragrance in it and you've become sensitized over time and has led to contact dermatitis. So for skin of color, this is bad news because for us, any form of inflammation triggers our melanocytes. As I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. So this means we can't afford to have contact dermatitis because it will leave a brown mark or um, a dark patch. And guess what? You're likely to put it under your armpits and for us, Darker armpits is something that can happen to us during puberty, but can also happen by using a, a cosmetic product that has led to inflammation, a rash, and then pigmentation. So for us, we can't afford that. For Caucasian skin, if this, you know, contact dermatitis and this inflammation usually goes red and they can improve their skin barrier, but it's not going to hyperpigment. You, they're not going to have a mark on there for years, whereas it's something that does affect us. And so we have to be a lot more educated with our, with our skincare because actually the vast majority of skincare formulated wasn't formulated with skin of colour in mind. So really the responsibility is on us to make sure we don't put anything onto our skin that can potentially irritate. So that's what can happen with fragrance. Now essential oils is slightly different. Essential oils can lead to sensitizing of the skin. So it's a bit different to contact dermatitis. It just means that your skin becomes more sensitive over time and neither of which you want really for skin of color. The other big problem with natural deodorants is that they often have sodium bicarbonate quite high up on the inky list, I-N-C-I, inky. That's the ingredients list. This means that it's at a high percentage and sodium bicarbonate is alkali. It's got a pH of 8.3, whereas our skin has a pH of about 4.5, 5.5. It's quite acidic actually, our skin. And so when you put something alkali onto the skin, you disrupt, you disrupt the skin barrier. And once you do that, it's basically a free-for-all because now you just opened up the skin barrier. Your skin then water evaporates from the skin so it gets dry. It's no longer protected from bacteria and fungus that's already around in our surroundings um, and that can lead to secondary infection and that infection can then lead to more inflammation and then more pigmentation and so it just becomes this vicious cycle. So I would always say anything with sodium bicarbonate at the top of your natural deodorants in particular please avoid. The reason they put it in is because they're trying to neutralize the acid in your sweat but it's just not worth it. I think there was a huge um, myth that went around that aluminium caused cancer 
and I think this is what basically led to the genesis of um, the natural deodorant market, which actually led to more issues for our skin. And so let's go back to the aluminium story. Does aluminium cause cancer? And the short answer is no. There is no conclusive evidence to show that aluminium causes cancer. In fact, we already have aluminium in our blood. Uh, we get aluminium from drinking water. We get, we get aluminium into our system from cooking in utensils that, that are made of aluminium. And so the amount of aluminium needed to cause cancer is not going to happen from skin absorption of a deodorant. So I think it's important to bust that myth because that myth has really led to a lot of issues for skin of colour. I myself have seen firsthand um, people who've had reactions from natural deodorants and then spend years trying to fight the hyperpigmentation under the arm because of this um, issue and we really just need to stop it um, specifically for our skin of colour family. There's another very annoying myth that keeps going around and that is that natural is better uh, and I'm sure, you, <laughs> I'm sure you already know my thoughts on this but natural doesn't mean better. Natural can be worse. Natural you know can be either way. It's not good or bad but um, the most important question to ask yourself is are these ingredients in the therapeutic index i.e are they working? Have they given you enough of the ingredient for it to work? Number two, what's the irritancy profile of that ingredient or that product, or if you combine those ingredients together? These two questions are key for skin of colour. This is something that we all need to know. And that's what, why this whole channel exists, is so that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be here forever. Um, and so really, we did need a video library to teach you the best ingredients and the ones to avoid. So hopefully, if you've watched 10 or more of my videos, this is you know, much easier for you. Now, for those of you who do struggle with ingredients, uh, which ones to avoid, which ones co to combine, which ones are best for skin of colour, I have a huge announcement coming out on the 9th of November. Uh, this is 2021. Um, and so I've basically done something that is, that I've been working on for a year um, and has been top secret and I haven't disclosed it to anybody. Um, and it's been probably, you know how I can't keep anything to myself and every thought I have, I, I broadcast. This has been one of the hardest secrets I've ever had to keep. Um, and so 9th of November, we will be announcing something huge for our Skin of Colour family that is going to tip the scales back into our favour because we are so underrepresented. Um, and so just keep your eyes open for the 9th of November on my Instagram, um, which is skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Mita Ratan, and also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Ratan too. But of course, I will be doing a full announcement on YouTube as well. I cannot wait to tell you what it is. <laughs> right, so moving on to the best bit of the video, which is what are Dr. V approved products um, that I'm happy for you to purchase and that I would purchase for my own family. So, um, I'd like to start off by saying it was extremely difficult to find uh, products that I would recommend. I would say 99% of them had fragrance in them um, or denatured alcohol. So denatured alcohol basically just dries the skin and you don't want to do that with sensitive skin under the arm, especially for skin of colour. We already have less ceramides in our skin than Caucasian skin. so. We, we look for NAFE safe products, no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils. So I only, literally I found only three that I would recommend. The first one is called Triple Dry. It does contain aloe, which I like, it's a roll-on. I like this for our children. So in the pre-puberty years, usually from about nine, 10 years old, um, they can start sweating and they might not like the odour from it. And it's actually very difficult to find your first deodorant, the first um, deodorant that you'd be happy to give to your child. Um, and actually this one I would use and I would recommend. So it's nafe safe um, and it's great as your first deodorant. Uh, the second product I really like is Green People Organic Lifestyle. Again, it's nafe safe and it contains skin conditioners too, and emollients and humectants. So it's great for sensitive skin. So that's the second product that I love. Then the third one is the 
is I specifically wanted to find one that came out um, as an aerosol in case that's something that you would like. And I found Dove Sensitive Antiperspirant Deodorant and that's the other one that I would recommend. Right, don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Um, don't forget to write down below what you think my major secret is and what I'm going to be announcing on the 9th of November. I can't wait to hear what you think it might be. <laughs> um, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram, on TikTok and ask me any questions you want below. Thank you so much. Bye.